Hey guys, so today's lesson is on volcanoes. We're looking um, back at the same standard, 2.1.1, on how the rock cycle plate tectonics, volcanoes, and earthquakes impact the lithosphere. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's look at the anatomy of a volcano. So first we need to talk about the magma chambers. Um, magma chambers um, provide the fuel for the volcanoes. All right, magma, um, once it reaches the Earth's surface, is called lava. All right, and the lava erupts through an opening called a vent. And um, not all volcanoes can have multiple vents. All right, um, over time lava accumulates to form a mountain um, that is called the volcano. All right, um, and at the top of the volcano is a bowl-shaped depression called the crater. All right, um, and then larger craters are called calderas, um, which can also form when the sides of a volcano collapses into the magma chamber. We have three main types of volcanoes. We have a shield volcano, we have a cinder cone volcano, and we have a composite volcano. And um, what determines the type of volcano is the type of material that forms it and the type of eruptions that occur. All right, so let's look, so look at some of the characteristics. Okay, shield volcanoes has a very small slope, um, um, does not usually have lava that shoots out in the air, and the lava flow thus is very slow, um, slow enough that you could outrun it. Um, and this this type uh, makes large chunks of basalt, and this is for an example on the Hawaiian Islands. Um, cinder cone volcanoes, these have the steepest slope of the volcanoes. Um, this shoots the lava out into the air and it has fast lava flow. The lava even hardens in the air, um, and then the hardened lava helps reform the volcano again. All right, and then we have composite volcanoes. This is the worst type of volcanoes. It's very explosive. Um, it ha gives off poisonous gases, ash and lava. Um, and ash can blanket um, any, an area with over an inch of the ash. Um, ash can fly faster than 200 miles an hour. And this kills more people than any other type of volcano. Um, and an example would be Mount St. Helens in um, Washington. So let's look at what volcanic material is. Um, so we have tephra, which is rock fragments that are thrown into the air. Um, and then um, those are classified according to size. Um, so everything, all volcanic materials are classified according to size. You have the tephra, which is thrown into the air. Um, you have dust, which is less than 0.25 millimeters in diameter. You have ash, which is slightly lar larger, but less than 2 millimeters. Um, lapilli, which are little stones. They're larger than 2 millimeters, but less than 64 millimeters. All right, and then volcanic blocks or volcanic bombs, like you see in this lovely picture. So everything from dust um, to volcanic blocks are how we ca um, categorize volcanic material. All right, we also have what's called pyroclastic flow. These are fast moving clouds of gas and ash and other tephra. Um, it travels at speeds of 200 kilometers per hour and it can contain hot poisonous gases. Um, so a few years ago, back in about 2010, um, there was um, a uh, Icelandic volcano that um, exploded and the pyroclastic flow um, settled over um, traveled over most of Europe um, and caused lots of delays in air travel and shipping of materials, um, and it was a really big deal. Um, then we have lahar. All right, um, this is a hot and cold mixture of water and rock fragments that flow down the volcano. Um, this is mud flow, debris flow, all these sorts of things, um, and that sort of cover things. So if you look at these lovely. Um, these lovely mailboxes that have are covered by the lahar. All right, um, I talked about this earlier, but let's just um, go back over it. All right, um, the difference between magma and lava. Magma is um, found beneath the Earth's surface. Um, it has large crystals when it cools slowly, and um, and it makes small crystals when it cools rapidly. Lava is magma once it flows onto the Earth's surface. So it's magma inside, lava outside. <coughs> All right. Um, what the, what is the effect of the volcano on the lithosphere and the atmosphere? All right. Volcanic 
activity adds rocks and boulders to the lithosphere, minerals to the soil, and material to the lithosphere in layers. So if we look at a volcano, we see that it forms things in layers as the lava flows down um, and it builds a mountain. Um, and this is where we can think about how islands are formed or different parts of um, mountain ranges are formed. All right. Atmosphere. So volcanoes do have an effect on the atmosphere. They add ash and gases to the atmosphere, especially during large explosions, but at pretty much at any time that uh, volcano is active. All right. Um, most volcanoes occur at plate boundaries. Um, so if we look, 80% um, of all volcanoes are found al around along convergent boundaries and 15% along divergent boundaries. Um, and only 5% occur far from plate boundaries. So if you go back and look at our um, plate boundary lesson, you can see the types of plate boundaries that um, result in volcanoes and how those ex um, experience. Um, we see a lot of volcanoes on what's called the ring of fire in uh, along the Pacific plate. Um, so you can look at that and see a lot. But then we still have hot spots. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, in other lines. Um, convergent volcanism, um, that's where slabs of oceanic crust descend into mantle and melt. Then that magma is forced up and it forms volcanoes. And this happens in two major belts, the Circum-Pacific Belt or the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is pretty large, and then also the Mediterranean Belt. Um, and this is where we see Mount Vesuvius and Mount Etna. Um, again, Mount Vesuvius is um, where the mountain next to Pompeii that covered it in volcanic ash, um, very famous. Um, then we have divergent volcanism. Um, this occurs um, in um, fractures and faults or rift zones where the plates separate. Um, and most of this occurs under the water in ocean ridges. And this results in the formation of new ocean floors. Um, the one place that we can see this above sea level is in Iceland because Iceland occurs a lot, exists along um, the fault, um, the divergent, uh, the divergent boundary. Um, and so this image just shows you that divergent um, rift valley um, in Iceland. All right, and then we have some. Um, volcanoes that are located far away from plate boundaries. These are called hot spots. Um, they're unusually hot regions of the Earth's man mantle where plumes of magma rise. Um, and there's a trail of progressively older volcanoes as the plate moves over the hot spot. So you generally see a chain of islands. All right, so an example here, of course, is the Hawaiian Islands. All right, um, the volcanoes on the oldest island. Uh, Kaui are inactive um, because the plate, the island is no longer sitting over the hot spot. Um, and then the world's most active volcano is on the big island of Hawaii and it is currently located over a hot spot. So what's happening is there is a hot spot and the plate is slowly moving along that hot spot. As it moves, it creates islands and then there becomes a chain of island. Um, Kaui, which is the furthest island, no, has a volcano that's no longer active because it's no longer sitting on top of the hot spot. But the island of Hawaii, with the world's most active volcano, is still sit sitting over that hot spot. But slowly over time, as that island moves away, that island, uh, that um, volcano will become dormant. So let's talk about um, volcanoes and how that affects us on society. Um, Volcanic act activity really is proof that our Earth is dynamic, it's changing, it's moving, there are great things happening on our planet. Um, and while many volcanoes can be spectacular events, cool things to observe, they do pose risks to humans and their environments. Um, it can totally destroy homes and habitats and environments, and um, that's a real huge effect to um, our well-being, the well-being of other animals, habitats, everything. All right, I look forward to talking to you more about volcanoes in class. Have a great day.